In this video, I will discuss the process of polynomial long division. Before I begin, I think it's important to note that there may be two ways that you are asked to divide polynomials. The first being uh, the two polynomials simply separated by a division sign, and the second is where the dividend is in a numerator of a fraction and the divisor is in the denominator, the two things that are being divided in a fraction. Mathematically speaking, a division sign and a fraction bar mean the exact same thing, mean the exact same thing. The first step in performing a polynomial long division is to simply set up the division. And that requires you to draw a division sign, a long division symbol, and the dividend, which is what you are dividing, is written inside or under the division sign. It's written in decreasing degree. That means the highest, the term with the highest power on x goes first, and then it goes down to each lower power on x and ends with the constant. So writing this dividend in decreasing degree under the division sign begins with 2x to the fourth. That's because x to the fourth is the highest power. And from x to the fourth, the next term has to be x to the third. And if you notice in this problem, it goes x to the fourth and then x to the second. There's no x to the third term. But when performing a polynomial long division, there has to be included every term from the highest degree down to the constant. Since the x to the third term is missing, you have to write 0x to the third yourself, even though that wasn't part of the original problem. You don't see that in the dividend when it's written as a regular division problem or when it's written as a fraction. There's no x to the third term. You have to write that 0x to the third term in yourself. The next term will be the x to the second term. And in this case, that's negative 3x to the second. The x to the first term is 7x, also known as the linear term. And the constant is minus 8. When the problem is written as a division, a polynomial divided by another polynomial, the thing that comes first, the polynomial that comes first is the dividend. It's what you are dividing, and that goes inside the division sign. After the division sign comes what is known as the divisor, and that's what you're dividing by. That is written, also in decreasing degree, outside of the division sign, outside of the division sign. Once you have the division set up, then it's time to actually perform the division. To begin the polynomial long division process, you look at the first term outside of the division sign and ask yourself, what would you have to multiply 2x squared by? What times 2x squared will give you 2x to the fourth, the first term inside the division sign? Well, x to the second has a coefficient, even though it's not written, has a coefficient of 1, and 2 times 1 would give you the 2, x to the second times another x to the second would give you x to the fourth. So if I multiply x squared times 2x to the second, that would give me 2x to the fourth. The first term in the answer is then 2x to the second. And I'm going to write that 2x to the second outside or on top of the division sign. And I'm going to write that right above the x to the second term that is inside the division sign. And then I'm going to take that 2x to the second and I'm going to multiply it not just by x to the second, I'm going to multiply it by all of the terms in the divisor, all of the terms in the polynomial outside of the division sign. First, 2x to the second times x to the second is 2x to the fourth. And that should always match up exactly with the 2x to the fourth that's already there. Then 2x to the second times x, a positive times a positive is a positive 2x to the third power. And finally, 2x to the second times negative 3 is negative 6x squared. After those three multiplications are complete, we're then going to subtract. 
You have to be very careful in the subtraction step. As we go down each column under the division sign, we're subtracting. We're subtracting all three terms. First, 2x to the fourth power minus 2x to the fourth power is 0x to the fourth power. I'm not even going to write a 0 here normally, but this, this subtraction yields 0. The next term is 0x to the third minus positive 2x to the third. 0 minus 2 is negative 2x to the third. And the last subtraction is negative 3x to the second minus negative 6x to the second. Negative 3x to the second minus negative 6x to the second is the same thing as negative 3x to the second plus 6x to the second, and that's 3x squared. You can think of the subtraction as being distributed. You can think of distributing this negative to all three terms because you're subtracting all three terms from the line above. After the subtraction is done, we're then going to bring down the next term, which is 7x, and repeat the process. This time, you're going to ask yourself, x squared times what is equal to negative 2x to the third? x squared times what equals negative 2x to the third? Well, x to the second only has a coefficient of 1, and if I want the coefficient in front of my answer to be negative 2, that means I'm going to have to multiply by negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and I also want to get this x to the second up to x to the third, and I can do that by multiplying by an x. Negative 2x times x to the second is negative 2x to the third. I will then perform that multiplication, but not just that multiplication. I'm going to multiply the negative 2x times x squared x and negative 3. Negative 2x times x to the second is negative 2x to the third. Negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared. Negative 2x times negative 3 is positive 6x. A negative times a negative is a positive 6x. I'm going to again subtract. I'm going to again subtract. Negative 2x to the third minus negative 2x to the third. When you subtract identical terms, the result is 0. The next subtraction 3x to the second minus negative 2x to the second is 5x to the second. 3x squared minus negative 2x squared, two negatives make a positive in this context, is the same as 3x squared plus 2x squared, which is 5x squared. And the last subtraction in this step is 7x minus positive 6x, 7x minus 6x, and that's positive 1x. Now that that subtraction is done, I'll bring down the next term, which is negative 8. And I have now one step left in this polynomial long division problem. For the final time, I'll ask myself, 1x squared, x squared times what is 5x squared? Well, the variables already match up. All I would have to multiply 1x squared by to get 5x squared is a positive 5. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. I'll perform those multiplications. I'll take the 5 and multiply it times x squared, x, and negative 3. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times x is 5x. And 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Again, the next step is subtraction. 5x squared minus 5x squared is 0. Those add up to 0. x minus positive 5x. x minus 5x is negative 4x. Negative 8 minus negative 15 is the same thing as negative 8 plus 15, which is positive 7. There's no more terms to bring down, and that means that the division is finished. 
The two terms that I have left are known as the remainder, and the remainder is written as a fraction at the end of the quotient. The answer to the division, or the quotient, is what is, are the three terms that I have written above the division sign, and to those three terms, I'm going to add the remainder as the numerator in a fraction that has the divisor, what I was dividing by to start with, as the denominator. And I was dividing by x squared plus x minus 3. The final answer to this division is 2x squared minus 2x plus 5 plus negative 4x plus 7 over x squared plus x minus 3.